be advised there will be manga spoilers bro is it just me or like anime watchers are like kids being sent to the playground when the adults need to talk bro anyways from chapter 251 and 252 of jjk we see the real insanity of yuji come about he is a human that acknowledges that he has no real weight in a fight against sukuna yet he continues to step up as a main player yuji is the definition of insanity yuji isidori is essentially nothing without the support of another strong sorcerer and many can even make the claim that if you were not in the manga currently their odds against sukuna would still come to be the same wrong 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 i'm making this video to tell everyone that you're wrong yuji itadori is an unfortunate sorcerer fated to have everything against him he is fated to feel weak and can only rely on someone else to have a chance against his main foes we see this in the yuji and toto versus maito fight where he leans heavily on toto not only for manpower but for emotional support because in that moment he saw how small and weak he actually was in the grand scheme of things and in the end of that fight he realized he is the same as a curse, struggling to exist in the world where he only wants one thing. He is the same as Maito, Jogo, and Geto. He wants to rid the earth of any type of curse, just as they want to rid the earth of any type of human. Deep down, he believes that genocide is the answer. With this indomitable goal, it is hard to understand how he is our shonen MC, because essentially he has the same ideals as our villains. But in reverse the only difference is that he is significantly weaker than everyone around him physically but mentally yuji itadori is the most insane character in jjk the definition of insanity is to try something again and again knowing there will only be one result yuji knows that there can never be a complete genocide of curses without some type of extreme unmoral strategy similar to what geito or kenjaku tried to do but he continues to seek the solution regardless even when the strongest sorcerer in all all of history was inside of his body continually laughing at him and his ideals. Yuji's insanity is what disgusts Sukuna and is what sets Yuji apart from any sorcerer Sukuna has ever faced in 1000 years. When it comes to ideals, Yuji has already beat Sukuna by 10 miles. If we look closely, unlike any other sorcerer that faced Sukuna, every time Yuji faces Sukuna, it is almost as if he's looking down on him. Yuji comes to him with the intentions of overcoming Sukuna just as another stepping stone in getting to where he wants to be. Sukuna realizes this mid fight after Yuji did something that proved his resolve. Sukuna realized that Yuji mastered the reverse curse technique in one month. The reason Sukuna did not overlook this is because he once coexisted with Yuji. He almost knew all his limitations and drawbacks. But once Yuji hit the climax of his insanity, after he had to fight a Megami with Sukuna's soul, he once again had to reevaluate his ideals and see if he can even take all of this. And his limit was once again broken. For reference, even a person like Gojo could not grasp the reverse curse technique for the majority of his life until his fight with Toji. And Higurama also learned it in only 4 months of having curse technique. So for Yuji to have gotten his reverse curse technique with only a few training sessions and under a month, it was accomplished with an unstoppable ideal and determination. He is not like Yuta with a gift of curse energy, nor is he Gojo who was the chosen one of this timeline. He is the work of pure insanity and resolve, which I speculate will become Sukuna's greatest fear. What most do not realize as well is that Yuji actually has a messy lineage and in theory his mother is actually Kenjaku himself. Kenjaku's actual name is Noritoshi Kamo and he's a part of the Kamo clan who can use blood manipulation technique. So if we were to assign Yuji to a clan he would most be aligned as a Kamo because we see him use his inherited curse technique for the first time against Sukuna where he makes the blood explode on his face. What this does is give Yuji two of the notches that used to set him back as a sorcerer. He has the reverse curse technique. He has the curse technique now he's missing one thing a domain expansion when yuji activates his domain for the first time he will reach the peak of his insanity similar to what megami experienced when he opened his domain for the first time his strong ideals will be solidified in this domain and possibly put him on par with the potential of higurama and yuta in the manga we see yuji and yuta fighting sukuna with one of the best strategies ever made in jjk right next to toji's plan to kill gojo their plan is to catch sukuna off guard with his own technique and yuji weakens the soul of sukuna separating sukuna from the soul of megami and thus hitting sukuna with angel's technique Jacob's Ladder, which will take away Sukuna's curse technique. The fact that Yuji is even fighting on the main stage after all the blows he took to his ego and soul throughout Sukuna being revived shows his insanity. So this paired with the selfishness of Yuta, which will definitely shake Sukuna up, but this is not what will deal the final blow to Sukuna. Sukuna will lose, and it will not be Gojo who defeats him, or Yuta, or Hikari, or Maki. It will be our weak, 
little insane struggling main character, Yuji Itadori. Yuji and Sukuna are polar opposites, where Sukuna sees things as it is and does not register the weight behind an ideal if you know it cannot happen. And Yuji is a complete feral animal, latching onto any hope of him reaching the end of chaos. Yuji grapples onto anything that will help him reach his ideals. He has the resolve of steel, something that Sukuna has never once felt until he coexisted with Yuji. While this is not yet a feeling of defeat, the only reason it made Sukuna completely space out in our fight between him and Yuji is because it may possibly be the door to his falling. It discusses him that Yuji can go toe to toe with him beyond a physical level. Sukuna will lose to Itadori, our insane selfless character that will quite literally do anything to get where he wants, the way he wants. In a previous video I made before the start of Gojo and Sukuna's fight, I already predicted that Gojo will lose, but I mentioned that even I do not know what will happen after Gojo falls, because in retrospect, who really can beat Sukuna when he is at full strength again? But it's clear to me now that if Sukuna were to lose, the only person that can defeat him is the one who once coexisted with him, and the most insane individual in the manga, none other than Yuji. In Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuji Itadori's character stands out for his relentless pursuit of challenging ideals, despite his physical limitations. His quick mastery of the reverse curse technique and speculated lineage from the Kamos clan showcases his determination. As the most mentally resilient character in the manga, Yuji's insanity becomes a unique strength that sets him apart from any typical shonen protagonist. The narrative hints an intriguing alliance between Yuji and Yuta against the formidable Sukuna, emphasizing strategic planning and the potential impact of Yuji's unyielding resolve. The story teases Yuji as the one to defeat Sukuna, suggesting that his understanding of the curse gained through their coexistence may hold the key to overcoming the powerful adversary. Readers eagerly waiting upcoming chapters to witness the culmination of Yuji's ability, including his domain expansion and reverse curse technique, as the manga explores unconventional storytelling norms. To conclude, Yuji's insanity is what will be the weakness of Sukuna, and it explains why Yuji has survived this long despite being the weakest of the bunch. Anyways, if you love JJK, subscribe to the channel and like this video or maybe check out one of my other videos that you'll probably enjoy anyways see ya